Hi, I'm going to make a video on the practice problems for chapter three, and I know chapter three can be really tough. So just take your time, follow the rules that are in the PowerPoint, and it should help you. All right, so let's look at number one. There are 23 countries in North America, 12 in South America, 47 countries in Europe, 44 countries in Asia, 54 in Africa, and 14 in, in the Pacific Ocean region. What is the probability that the event is a country in Asia. So what I need to do first is I need to see how many countries I have together. So I'm gonna add 23 plus 12 plus 47 plus 44 plus 54 plus 14. And I get 194, okay? But what's the probability I have a country in Asia? Well, I have 44 countries in Asia. So I'm gonna do 44 divided by 194. And you don't have to reduce it if you don't want to. It's okay. All right? So that's my answer. So what's the probability that I have a country in Africa? So I have 54 countries in Africa. And again, it's over the 194. That didn't change. Okay? All right. So let's keep going. So I've got it again. So now I'm looking for let O equal the events in the country in the Pacific Ocean region. So I'm going to do 14 divided by 194. That's how you get that, okay? You don't, again, don't reduce. It's fine. All right. So that's how you do those type of problems. So let's look at this. So now we're going to use the symbols. Before we were given the stuff, we had to figure out the probability. Now we're going to try to figure out the symbols. So on a baseball team, there's infielders and outfielders. And there's great hitters, and there's some not great hitters. So I is that you're an infielder. O is that you're an outfielder, H is that you're a great hitter, and N is that you're not a good hitter. So I want to know the probability that a player is an infield given, excuse me, an infielder given that they're a great hitter. Okay. So for this one, infielder is going to be the first thing given in the, in the expression with hitter being the last. So it would be this one because this is saying the probability that a player is an infielder slash given that they're a great hitter. That's how you would solve that one, okay? All right, again, same symbols. What is it that a player is an outfielder and a great hitter? All right, this is an easier one because and, because you have to have both things together. So I want an O and an H. So I go down here, I have an O and an H, okay? Oops, sorry, it's not an or, an and. I don't want the or, I want the and, okay? Because or is an addition and is a multiplication. And that's what it's actually saying here. It has the word and. So all you have to do is put the word and. Okay. All right. Write the symbol probability that of all the great hitters, a player is an outfielder. All right. This one's a kind of tough one, but let me walk you through it. Because your first thing you're saying is I want all the great hitters. And because of the all the great hitters, I want an outfielder. So. You think of this as like being the probability of an outfielder, given that you have all the great hitters. So it's going to be this one, okay? Because remember, all that great hitters is taken into account everybody, and the outfielder is just part of all those great hitters. So that's what it would be. It's very similar to this one up here with the given the, the player is a great hitter, okay? Very, very similar. All right, so this is where they kind of get trickier, so let's talk about it. All right, so this one is E and F are mutually exclusive events. The probability of E is 0.2 and the probability of F is 3. What's the probability of P where E given F? All right, so if you go back to mutually exclusive rules, and I would go to the PowerPoint because they're kind of tough, you're going to see that like you have conditional probability in the stuff. But if you go to the mutually exclusive here, okay, Mutually exclusive means that they're never, ever, ever, ever going to be together, okay? So that means they don't share any outcomes, and P, A, and B will be equal zero. All right, but you know if you're given, hold on, let me go back. If you're given this, the top one of the P, the probability E given F is P and F. So if you're, if you know P, of E and F is zero, then it's always going to be zero, okay? Because they're mutually exclusive events, that means it's always going to be zero, okay? So let's do this. If they're independent events, J and K are independent, 
P, uh, the probability of J given K is 0.7. Find the probability of J. All right, I just hit that rule. It's right here, okay? If it's showing one of these rules, then it means it's independent. And it already told you it's independent. So because it's independent, it is okay for J to equal P, the probability of J given K. So the answer to this one is 0 0.7. If this is confusing you, again, go back to your rules and it'll help you get it together. All right, here we go. U and V are mutually exclusive events. What is the probability of U and V? Okay, we did that before, right? We did it up here, correct? We did it for this one, but in a different way. But because they're mutually exclusive events, that means they'll never happen together. So that is zero. There's zero probability of it happening together. So then what is the probability of U given V? Again, remember the top of this problem is the probability of U and V. And we know here it's zero, so this one's zero. All right, probability of U or V. Okay, U or V means U or V is occurring. And that can happen, that's an addition one. And we're okay with that when they're mutually exclusive. If you have a hard time with this, go back to the rules because we have them in here about what can happen the rules, the or, mutually exclusive, we can have it, okay? So it says here, if A and B are mutually exclusive and P, the probability of A and B equals zero, that's okay. But because probability of A or B, then you can add probability of A and B together. So to get this, we just have to add the probability of U, which is 0.28, plus the probability of B, which is 0.31. And for this one, oops. Let me get it, equals 0 0.59. Okay, I know these are tricky. What you wanna do, really go back to your rules, make a guide to help you with your rules. All right, so here we go. We got one more to do. So this one says, Q and R independent events. The probability of Q and the probability of Q and R. Okay, find the probability of R. So, I'm going to show you what I'm looking at. Okay, if I go back to my rules, let me see where it is. Ah, see this rule right here? Right here? You can use that rule, okay? Or let's see which other rule I can use. Ah, here, okay? This one too, probability of A and B equals, excuse me, not that one. Hold on. This rule, this is the rule I'm thinking about, okay? You can use these to get the probability of R because they're independent. Let me go back up and see if I can find the actual notes on them. Come on, let's see. Hold on. It's these rules, okay? So I'm looking at this rule in specifically. Probability of A and B equals probability of A times the probability of B, all right? I'm gonna use this rule right here, go back to my problem. So I have the probability of Q and R and I have the probability of Q and I wanna find the probability of R. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do 0 0.09 divided by 0.2 and I get 0 0.45. All right, let's check it. So if the probability of R is 0.45 times the probability of Q, which is 0.2, that gives me the probability of Q and R of 0 0.09, okay. Again, go to the PowerPoint, play with the examples. I'm here, get familiar with the independent and mutual events and it should help you, okay? And that's all I have for chapter three. I hope it helped.